uh, in the DB room. Uh, just, I guess, tell us about some, how some of the new guys are, are fitting in with you. Um, so we uh, got a few new guys. One, uh, Jaheim Singletary, uh, has been really impressive these uh, first four days. Uh, getting the defense down, he's flying around, communicating, fitting with the rest of the guys. Uh, same with Keon Stewart, uh, another new guy that we have. Uh, just getting him acclimated, and he's doing a good job. Uh, impressive player, both of those guys new. Uh, when you talk about from a freshman perspective, uh, T.J. Metcalf, uh, he continues to impress. Uh, if you walked on the field, you wouldn't even know he's a freshman, how he communicates, how he talks. Uh, he, he, he's he's impressive. Also, uh, another guy, Jalen Braxton, has been having a really good uh, fall camp also. And just talking from a new guy's or uh, freshman perspective. Single Terry specifically, he was a really big time recruit when he first went to George and stuff. Just looking at him, he might be your tallest defensive back. Looks like he could be the quickest feet too. I mean, just what what kind of talent is, is he, and and what does he have to do to uh, I guess get on the field for you? Um, all we tell him continue to uh, learn the defense and uh, communicate. He's a guy. You said he's been impressive. He he's to get on the field, keep doing what he's doing, getting better, uh, keep on elevating right because if you're not getting better you're getting worse and over these first four days he has been getting better every day uh so keep on growing and he'll he'll be a, a really good player just as you said walcott missed the spring just what have you seen from him the first four practices of fall camp uh, another impressive guy um you can tell he's played a lot of snaps before uh, when he communicates uh he's loud he uh is confident he flies around he's a hitter he can cover uh, well, Al is he, he's he's a great addition. Glad to have him back. Hudson moved from corner to safety last year, starting at safety right now in fall camp. What do you think about him so far? Uh, with Hudson, uh, Hudson is a guy that could play all five positions, both corners, the hall, the nickel position, or either safety. Uh, from his intelligence, uh, he get, gets guys lines up, lined up. He can cover. Uh, Hud is he's progressing as well called the nickel spot the hog the other day so i guess y'all are using them both but who who at that position has risen up i mean we see jalen lewis with the ones but can you tell us about that spot a little uh the hog position yes jalen uh j lou has been uh having a really good uh fall camp so some other guys we kind of we're in a position at the hog we also have aj brathway that's a guy i failed to uh, mentioned when we talked about the hog, uh, talk about new guys, which he's been impressive. Also, uh, we got Jabri Shaw, another new guy at hog. Um, we, 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 we have some guys there. We rolling them out in and out. As we say, uh, we still early in camp trying to figure it out, but, uh, those guys are doing well. Do you work more with the corners and the nickels or how do you and Marcus do this? <laughs> I knew that would probably be a question. So um, to answer the question, so we meet as a secondary all together. Sometimes he runs the meeting. Sometimes I run the meeting. Uh, as we Sometimes we split up because the reason we run it together because we all want one voice, whether it's his voice or my voice, which if it's his voice, it is my voice. If it's my voice, it is his voice because we're on the same page. Uh, at times we split up where I may take the corners and he make to take the safeties and vice versa. Uh, so we work as one, uh, make sure we always on the same page, uh, no matter uh, reason for doing it. Uh, let's say he's upstairs and I'm downstairs on the game. They, everybody's used to hearing that one voice or vice versa. If I'm upstairs and he's downstairs, everybody used to hearing that one voice and we all on the same page. Uh, nah, we, we had, we hadn't had the first scrimmage yet. So we, we don't have it ironed out yet. Uh, Dwight last year, he had a pretty good season. Then in the bowl game, I think he got a defensive MVP, McLaughlin. Just how, how does he looked in the spring? We didn't get to talk to you in the spring. So how do you do in the spring? And then the first three or four practices this preseason? Uh, Dwight has had in the spring, he had a good spring. Uh, he's having a great camp, uh, with Dwight special talent he's coming along as a leader being more vocal holding himself accountable then holding other guys accountable accountable started in the spring progressively got better throughout the summer and then after the summer he's continuing to doing it do it throughout this fall camp and transfer for they come in the first year and they're 
kind of don't want to step on anyone's toes, just trying to fit in the, the next year, the ones that have more than one year of eligibility that take on more of a leadership role. Do you see that pretty is that pretty common with transfers? Uh the transfer portal is probably what three or four years old right now. So we we all figuring it out. But yes, it's it's typical. You're getting to it, you're going to a new environment and you don't want to step on anyone's toes. And then now you get a little bit more comfortable the second year you've been through a spring, you've been through a fall camp and they know you better, and it naturally starts to happen. I mean, Landon Jackson, was, they were talking about Landon Jackson being that way the other day. That's why I kind of brought that up. Just, you know, he came in the same time he did. Mm. Well, I just had a couple of terminology deals. So you call it boundary corner, boundary safety. You call it field corner on the other side. And yes, sir. You call it field safety or free safety? Free safety. Free safety. Mm -hmm. Are you flipping those guys? Are you flipping them to play to play? Uh, honestly, it, it depends on the defensive scheme that we have in. It depends on the defensive scheme. So, okay. I mean, I just think with like offenses hurrying up, sometimes it might be hard to flip corners and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, well, of course, you game plan for all those type of things. So, you, you guys are four practices in. You go until Wednesday and you take some time off. Uh, is there any thoughts to like maybe switching some things up, trying some guys at different spots, maybe a, a corner to a, a nickel or safety to nickel or – corner to safety, any of that kind of stuff? Uh, of course, uh, that always happens because you put in dime packages, you put in quarter packages, and you have to find the best five or the best six when you talk about dime. So you're always trying to figure out, let's always get the best five or six on the field together and uh, so you could put the best – you could be – put your best foot forward. Uh, R.J. Johnson and Christian Ford, are they safeties? They're safeties, yes. So uh, – just by my count, I think you got like nine players working over at cornerback. Um, is that and so that would put like what eighteen guys over at uh, at safety nickel? Is that about the ratio you yeah. want? Or so Coach Pittman, like even at practice, coach, he does a good job of we have a, something called two spot, and it worked for us again because we have two full time secondary coaches, and we split the secondary up. One going on this field, so and so, and that always mix and match. Uh, it helps with the development of the team. Right, because everybody's getting reps. If we always had one field, well, of course, people are watching and not learning. And, and and through my experience playing and coaching, the best way to learn is by doing it. So when I'm making the mistakes or I'm doing it the correct way as a player, I am feeling it and seeing it's like, oh, I got it. Oh, oh yeah, coach, I see what you're saying. You know, I know you weren't here last year, but Hudson. A lot of times he was in the right spot, but he had trouble, you know, making a tackle. Sam talked about that the other day. He's added about 12 pounds. I know you guys aren't tackling to the ground yet in practice. Just kind of, what have you seen from Hudson with, with that weight? Maybe if you looked at film last year, how he might be different. Uh, Hudson is playing stronger. Uh, he has gained weight um, and corrected some technique errors within tackling. Um, he has gotten better with angles to the ball. Uh, we always talk about near footing it, near shoulder. Uh, he has gotten a lot better with that. And then, you know, obviously, you know, we all know pass defense was, was an issue last year. You got to look at the stats. I know it's early, you know, spring and a few fall camp. But what sense do you have about how the pass defense is going to be improved and, and why? Um, one, way, one way we uh, plan to improve it uh, is within the, the camaraderie, camaraderie and making every – we meet all together because one issue that you see around the country, not specifically last year here, but around the country, period, if you have issues within a pass game, busted coverages is because of communication, all right? And that's the reason we do the things that we do, myself and Coach Woodson, having guys together and hearing both voices. So now communication – it's not an issue. Pursuit to the ball is not an issue. That's two ways. Communication, not busting. One way, communication, not busting coverages and getting to the ball. Arkansas has gone to four down linemen, obviously. Do you like that better as a secondary coach? Oh, I, that probably would be a question for uh, Coach T. Will. Whatever coach wants to do, I'm with it. If it's four down, if it's three down, if it's just three, three, five, whatever it is, I'm all for it. I support my coordinator. I support my head coaching, whatever it is. As were where well, you weren't, you weren't here, but 131 out of 131 last year and passing yards surrendered on defense. Did you know that when you took the job? And what, what's kind of been the thoughts with you guys, you and Coach Woodson and uh, Coach Williams, um, just about turning that thing around? Because Coach Woodson, I know when he got to Florida State, one mm -hmm. of the worst pass defenses in the country the year before. And last year, I think they were fourth nationally. Um, myself, Coach Woodson, and the guys, we embraced the challenge. 
uh, we embrace the challenge and becoming better. Uh, we're always hard on them. Um, don't let up. And uh, the, the standard is the standard. What that expectation is, don't lower it. We always talk about, we don't talk in 110%. We don't talk in, we talk in 100%. We want your best to be your best. Not 95, we want it to be at 100% every single day. Talked a little bit about um, some of the transfers. We know a lot about Lorando Johnson because he was here. Uh, but could you touch a little bit more on 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 Keon Stewart, what he brings to the table, and and AJ Brathwaite, and you know, what kind of role you might see for him also? Uh, both of those guys, uh, Keon and AJ, uh, bring something to the table with uh, their vets. They have a lot of snaps under their belt. Belt. Uh, Keon played as a true freshman, started as a true freshman at TCU. Uh, AJ started the last school he was at. Um, so, with that being said, they bring um, veteran leadership game experience. And you can't – game experience is the best experience you could have when you're talking about $80,000 80, – people, 60,000 people, however many it is. It's a little different when you're a true freshman and you made some mistakes. You can be a good player, but you still make mistakes. And now those mistakes when you're older, like, oh, I remember that play from last year. So they they definitely bring some uh, veteran uh, mentality and snaps being played to our defensive backfield. I feel like you kind of hit on it right there, but when you were adding these these guys in the transfer portal, what exactly were you looking for in in the guys? Um, the first thing we look for is a fit, right? Would they fit our room? Could they fit in with the guys? Could they meet the standard of a expectation is 100% every single day? The next thing when we were looking like, okay, we do need some older guys. Um, or if we had a young guy that was a really good high school player or older guy that made plays in college, um, that's the two things that we're looking for. A couple older guys, Ladarius Bishop and Malik Chavis, just what are you seeing from them so far? Oh, they're having great camps as well. They're having great camps as well. Uh, Malik is having a really good camp. Um, communication, um, getting to the ball. Tackling, covering, uh, Malik is doing well in day day. Uh, he's progressing with technique things and uh, embracing the challenge as well to get better. So is the group. Jalen Braxton, what is it about his skill set that you guys like that he's in the two deep at corner? Jalen Braxton can fly. Uh, he has really good change of direction. Um, he's a guy. He's mature and he wants to be a really good player. Uh, he has all the potential in the world. He uh. He has a shot to be a good player in this conference, a really good player in this conference. With us, Sam Pittman has floated the idea a couple of times about if if you feel like you're good enough at corner, that maybe one of those guys can go over and help at hog slash nickel. And he's brought up Snacks' his name. How has that progressed any further yet? Yes, uh, he's been playing a little hog. But at our mindset for the secondary period is kind of like get the best five on the field. And that's what the head coach mindset is. Uh, in meetings, like, hey, who's the best five? Let's get the best five on the field so we can put our best foot forward. You don't want to have one of your better guys on the bench because he's stacked behind whether it's a safety or he's stacked behind a corner. Let's get the best five on the field. Recruiting question. You spent time in uh, San Antonio. You got, obviously, ties to Louisiana. Spent time at Florida last year. What do you view your role as a recruiter, like territorial, and and what do you think makes a good recruiter? Um, the thing that I feel is don't make a good recruiter is relationships. So, um, with anything, when you get the initial contact, you don't, you're not asking them to trust you. Just want to hear for them to listen to you. And now the relationship is be who you are, say who you are. Right. So if I say one thing and doing something opposite, one is not matching. Right. So always be true to who you are, uh, and stay consistent. Do what you say you're going to do. All right. Um, from the aspect of area. Um, so, again, I did spend time in Texas. Uh, I spent time I've, by birth in Louisiana uh, and I also worked at a school in Louisiana. But uh, so that does help from a relationship standpoint, um, knowing people um, from a high school area standpoint, coaches. Your area is pretty much Texas, Louisiana. As prime recruiting areas for you. <laughs> I view my area wherever Coach Sam Pittman says it, it is to go get a defensive back. You to the other side of the ball. Obviously, you see these wide receivers quite a bit. Is there anybody that's that's giving you guys some trouble? Um, one of the guys is doing well. I think Armstrong. Uh, he he's a good player. 
um, Jay, Jay Wilson. I always call him my little cousin. <laughs> Same last name. He's doing well. Uh, we, we, we got a good, pretty good group of receivers. Um, I don't thank a specific guy, but I know the group is doing well. What are the differences or improvements that you've seen in Nudie's play from spring until now? And then what, what did you see in his off season? Where... Um, I think Nudie is straining more, um, getting to the ball from a technique standpoint, he is getting better. The different things that we talk about and work on. And I think he's trying to get better, whether it's at home, whether it's in a weight room, uh, or at practice, he's asking educated questions on what he should do in certain situations. Uh, I think Nudie is uh, uh, the white is coming along. It's like it's pretty competitive in practice between the receivers and the DBs. That's always good because if one unit's whipping the other consistently, that's that's not good. But what, what have you seen, you know, just in these first few practices between the receivers and, and the DBs, the competition and stuff? Oh, uh, exactly what you say. It's competition every day. All right. And, and when you talk competition every day, it is a problem if you just which hopefully would transition to translating the game if we're just dominating them every day. Uh, but it's good. Comp they're making plays. We're making plays. Um, and that happens. We're on day four. We want to get to a point, hopefully, where uh, we're making all of the plays. But at the end of the day, we're still a team. We're all together. You're making all the plays. That's not good, though. I mean, <laughs> right. I mean for for the SEC schedule. I mean, and and, and then you know, Nudie. I we, we asked him. I don't know how how much consideration he gave to maybe coming out for the draft, but I'm sure it was a, a thought anyway. I would think it's good to see played having a guy like him back, who's got SEC experience at two schools and is going to a second year here. How 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 big was that? Do you think in retrospect? Um, it's similar to the conversation we had about the last guys getting guys that have game rep experience. So when he came in, of course, he came in from another school, um, with game rep experience and he is, uh, again, continue to develop and making plays and doing well. So 